About 200 years ago, several American states, including parts of California, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, and others, were actually a part of Mexico. This significant land transfer, known as the Mexican Cession, is often overlooked by many people despite being one of the largest territorial exchanges in modern history. To fully grasp the reasons behind this historical event, we need to go back to Texas in 1836. During the Texas Revolution, Texas was under Mexican rule and housed a significant number of Anglo-American citizens who sought independence and the establishment of the Republic of Texas. Although the Texas Uprising was part of a broader conflict known as the Mexican Federalist War, which involved various provinces opposing President Antonio López de Santa Ana's regime. The Mexican government believed that the United States played a role in instigating the Texas insurrection with the intention of annexation. While other provinces failed to break away from Mexico, Texas successfully severed ties and formed the Republic of Texas. For nearly a decade, the Republic of Texas existed as an independent nation before it was eventually annexed by the United States in 1845. This annexation further fueled tensions between Mexico and the United States, ultimately leading to the outbreak of the Mexican-American War in 1846. The primary cause of the war was the dispute over the border between Texas and Mexico. The United States claimed the Rio Grande as the border, while Mexico argued that it was the Nueces River further north. Attempts by President Polk to purchase the disputed land from Mexico were unsuccessful. In April 1846, the United States Navy blockaded the Rio Grande, and in response, Mexican General Pedro de Ampudia ordered U.S. forces to withdraw beyond the Nueces River. When the U.S. refused, Mexico declared a defensive war, and Mexican troops attacked U.S. forces between the Nueces and Rio Grande. On May 13, 1846, the U.S. Congress declared war on Mexico. U.S. forces, led by Colonel Stephen Watts Kearney, captured Santa Fe in August 1846 after the Mexican governor, Manuel Armijo, dissolved his army and fled to Chihuahua. The next significant objective for the U.S. Army was the fortified city of Monterrey, the capital of northeastern Mexico. On September 25, 1846, after intense fighting and artillery bombardment, U.S. forces captured Monterrey. By the end of 1846, the northeastern regions of Mexico were under U.S. control. With control over Mexico's northwestern territories, President Polk aimed for the capital, Mexico City. Following the path taken by Hernán Cortés in 1519, U.S. troops landed at Veracruz in March 1847. After days of bombardment, Veracruz fell on March 29. On May 15, 1847, U.S. forces captured the city of Puebla after defeating Mexican troops at the Battle of Cerro Gordo on April 18. The U.S. Army then marched towards Mexico City, engaging in battles with Santa Ana's troops along the way. After Santa Ana rejected a truce proposed by American Major General Winfield Scott, U.S. forces positioned themselves outside Mexico City on September 13. They commenced a bombardment of the historic Chapultepec Castle, which sat atop a hill overlooking the city. The castle, serving as a military academy, housed soldiers and cadets who refused to surrender. The following morning, U.S. soldiers stormed and captured the castle. American forces then advanced to the city gates, sparking fighting with Mexican troops that extended into the city and lasted until nightfall. After civilian officials in Mexico City convinced Santa Ana to withdraw his troops to avoid further bloodshed, American forces took control of the capital. The Mexican government relocated its headquarters to Querétaro, approximately 135 miles away. On September 16, 1847, General Antonio López de Santa Ana announced his resignation and left the country for exile in Kingston, Jamaica. The United States Army transitioned from an invasion force to an army of occupation. U.S. troops remained in Mexico City from September 14, 1847, to June 12, 1848. Friends, now is the perfect time to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. With Mexican forces effectively capitulated, the two countries began negotiating a treaty.
However, there were divided opinions in the U.S. Congress on how to proceed with Mexico, including a movement known as the All Mexico Movement, which advocated for the annexation of the entire country. Within a month, a treaty was reached between the United States and Mexico on February 2, known as the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Under this agreement, the U.S. committed to compensating Mexico with $15 million and assuming the claims of U.S. citizens against Mexico, which amounted to $5 million. Mexican citizens residing in the ceded territories were given the choice to return to Mexico or remain and become full U.S. citizens, resulting in diverse cultural heritages being maintained by many who chose to stay. The Mexican session had significant social, economic, and cultural impacts. The acquired territories experienced an influx of settlers from the eastern United States, leading to demographic and lifestyle changes in the region. Furthermore, the discovery of gold in California in 1848 sparked the famous gold rush, accelerating the state's economic development. Although a peace treaty was signed, tensions persisted between the United States and Mexico for several years over disputed territories in Mexico's Mesilla Valley which eventually became parts of Arizona and New Mexico. In December 1853, the two countries reached an agreement known as the Gadsden Purchase, wherein the territory was ceded to the U.S. for $10 million. This purchase provided the necessary land for completing the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We have many more stories ahead, dedicated to fascinating events and remarkable individuals. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.